There's a dark secret about intermittent fasting that you need to know about, because if you get this wrong, you can significantly worsen your health and increase your chance of developing diabetes. This is a nuanced topic, so I highly recommend that you watch this video until the end, where I pull everything together and summarize the latest intermittent fasting guidelines. Intermittent fasting comes in many different forms, but the popular ones are time-restricted feeding, where you only eat within a certain window in the day, typically you eat within 8 hours and fast for the other 16. Other popular forms are alternate day fasting and one meal a day. And the excitement for intermittent fasting came from studies in rodents, which reported that time-restricted feeding, reduced body weight, improved blood sugar control and lowered insulin levels, and critically, this happened even when food intake was matched to the control group. So both groups of mice ate the same amount of calories, but the time-restricted feeding group seemed to get all of these additional benefits, which led to an explosion in popularity for intermittent fasting, where even if you didn't need to lose weight, some longevity scientists were advocating for intermittent fasting as a strategy to extend lifespan. And the presumed mechanism for these possible benefits was a process called autophagy, or the cell clearance process. So as we age, we collect old, damaged components within our cells, and autophagy is the process where we clear those old components away so that we can rebuild new ones. And autophagy is strongly activated by starvation. But we are not mice. What does the human clinical research show? And that's where the dark secret about intermittent fasting is uncovered. Starting with a 2020 meta-analysis that pulled all of the relevant relevant clinical trials together, it concludes that time-restricted feeding achieved superior effects in promoting weight loss and reducing blood sugar levels compared to approaches with unrestricted time meal consumption. That all sounds wonderful, but then you dig a bit deeper and bear with me because it's quite the rabbit hole. The time-restricted feeding groups ate less calories compared to the control group. So when you analyse the research, it appears that time-restricted feeding is effective for weight loss, probably because fewer calories are consumed. And that makes sense. If you've made a conscious decision not to eat during certain parts of the day, generally you're going to consume less calories overall. Which begs the question, what benefits does intermittent fasting provide beyond calorie restriction? Well, according to a Cochrane review published in 2021, it appears that intermittent fasting is not more effective for weight loss compared to other energy restriction diets. The analysis also found that intermittent fasting is not more effective to reduce blood sugar levels when compared to other restriction diets. Take for example this 2019 randomized controlled trial that tried to make sure that both groups were eating the same amounts of calories, but one group was practicing alternate day fasting. The study concluded that alternate day fasting may provide greater reductions in fasting insulin versus calorie restriction. Which again sounds great, but then you have a closer look. During this study, both the alternate day fasting groups and the calorie restriction groups reduced their net calorie intake by 25% per day. The calorie restriction group ate 1,761 calories per day, whereas the alternate day fasting groups on the day that they were fasting, they ate 1,175 calories, and on their feast day, they ate 1,763. So overall, the alternate day fasting group still ate less calories compared to the calorie restriction group. So if one group is eating less calories compared to the other, that is why they see benefits. What about potential benefits for hunger levels? Some people who practice intermittent fasting say that their overall hunger levels decrease. And if that's you, great. But in the clinical studies, generally most people struggle to stick with fasting. The adherence is suboptimal. There's always going to be exceptions to the rule, but generally speaking, fasting does not overall lower your hunger levels. What about benefits for fatty liver? Well, in a massive 2023 randomized controlled trial, time-restricted feeding did not produce any additional benefits for reducing body fat or liver fat compared to daily calorie restriction. And other meta-analyses that pull all of the relevant clinical studies together keep coming to the same conclusion. Intermittent fasting is not associated with greater or lesser weight loss than non-intermittent fasting diets. And taken from Professor Matt Caberline's review, it appears that modern intermittent fasting protocols are largely a rebranding of classic calorie restriction methods. Here's the dark secret about intermittent fasting. People who use intermittent fasting to help lose weight and treat their diabetes, they're getting those benefits simply from calorie restriction alone. From the human research that we've got, there's nothing magical about intermittent fasting. So for otherwise healthy people who don't need to lose weight or treat their diabetes, there doesn't appear to be any benefits from practicing intermittent fasting. 
But there are two sinister issues with intermittent fasting that I'll cover shortly, and both can be solved. But first, why do humans not get additional benefits from intermittent fasting like mice do, beyond calorie restriction? Well, it's important to remember that a mouse hour is not the same as a human hour. So broadly speaking, if a mouse fasts for 16 hours, that's roughly the equivalent of a human fasting for about 4 to 5 days. And the human liver has energy reserves that last about 48 hours, so it's highly unlikely that autophagy is going to be meaningfully activated if you're fasting for between 16 to 24 hours. Longer fasts may have different effects, but then you need to worry about losing muscle mass, and that brings me onto the first of two issues with intermittent fasting. And that is protein intake and muscle mass. A 2020 study published in the British Medical Journal found that higher protein intakes are associated with lower all-cause death rates. And ideally, we want to be reaching 1.6 grams of protein intake per kilogram of lean body weight per day, but if you're fasting, it can be incredibly difficult to reach those protein targets. Which is why intermittent fasting can represent a suboptimal dietary approach to remodel skeletal muscle. Now, the protein research recently had a massive update which I covered in a video here. It used to be thought that protein intakes should ideally be evenly distributed throughout the day where you have a protein meal every 3 to 4 hours. But a landmark study published this year, 2024, found that eating a single large amount of protein is likely just as effective as splitting that protein intake through multiple meals. This may explain why time-restricted feeding patterns do not seem to compromise muscle mass maintenance. Instead, when it comes to protein intake and muscle mass, it's the total protein intake through the day that seems to really matter, rather than the frequency of the protein meals. So if you're using intermittent fasting to restrict calories, to lose weight and treat diabetes, make sure that you're prioritizing your protein intake, and if you're struggling to reach your protein targets, you can consider adding a protein shake. This is a fixable problem with short intermittent fasting. Prolonged fasts though, that's a different story. There's a significant concern that we lose muscle mass with prolonged fasts, and we don't have the long-term human research to know whether any potential benefits from these prolonged fasts outweigh the known risks. The second fixable problem is meal timing. Most people who practice time-restricted feeding skip breakfast and have a large meal at the end of the day. That's a bad idea. We have multiple studies showing that if you have a large meal at the end of the day, that worsens blood sugar levels and impairs insulin responses. And I'm going to show some of those studies on screen now. Having breakfast is important, and that's why the current intermittent fasting trials are examining early time-restricted feeding, as in making sure you're getting your calories in the morning and fasting in the evening. So let's pull it all together. Intermittent fasting can be a great way for some people to lose weight and treat their diabetes, and if that's you, brilliant. But the dark secret is that it works via calorie restriction. In humans, there's no evidence that something magical is happening beyond calorie restriction. And there are two important but fixable problems. The first one is protein. Most people who practice intermittent fasting aren't getting enough protein intake, but so long as you know that, you can prioritize your protein intake and make sure that you're reaching that 1.6 gram of protein intake per kilogram of body weight per day. The second fixable problem is meal timing. Make sure you're getting most of your calories in the morning compared to the evening. But here's the most important point. Most people to significantly improve their health should aim to have a light, early dinner and then immediately brush your teeth. That's a powerful signal that you've finished eating for the day. You want to cut out the late night eating. A general rule of thumb is to eat breakfast like a king, lunch like a prince, and dinner like a pauper. And for me personally, to make sure that I'm reaching my micronutrient intakes, I take microvitamin. But please remember that just because I take a supplement does not in any way mean that you should as well. In this video, I've talked a lot about protein intake, so make sure to check out this next video here that goes through that new protein study in detail. And a massive thank you to all of the patrons supporting the channel.